Welcome to the Leadership Essentials on Formation, Christian Formation tonight. Um, I'm Kim Snodgrass, and I'm Assistant to the Bishop for Christian Formation, and I am so glad to see all of you here. I, I do anticipate some others will join us as we go on, and I do have a brief presentation. Well, I hope it's brief anyway, and then I just kind of like to open it up to discussion and questions and see where you are and what I can do to help you. So uh, let's go back and TJ will take a couple of minutes to introduce and TJ, would you tell us about yourself and what brings you? Yeah, uh, I am TJ Donalo. I'm from St. Matthews in Ozark. And uh, I know we've always been uh, looking to uh, you know, build our, our congregation. And, and uh, I've, I've really looked towards uh, resources on Christian formation. So I saw this and, and thought this would be a great spot to, to jump in at. Well, I'm glad you did. Okay. And uh, Father Larry, you're right. You're to, you're right up there. So you're, <laughs> I'm going to pick you. So I'm Larry Aaron. I'm a priest in charge at St. Mary Magdalene. Tomorrow is our feast day. Um, and I have a, 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 in a lot of my ministry through my life, it's been with adult formation. So things like the catechumenate, um, uh, things like renewal works, um, things like small group ministry, um, those are my interests. And I'm on the uh, faith formation committee uh, commission with uh, Kim. And most recently, we piloted uh, the Alpha course at Mary Magdalene. To, to kind of explore um, whether that's a good fit for the Episcopal Church. And uh, the Alpha Course is a basic course in Christianity. So um, that's kind of me. Okay, uh, Father John. Uh, John Coyle, I'm now assisting priest at St. Andrews and um, involved now on the Christian Formation Commission and real concerned about adult Christian formation in that setting. And so I saw this resource was available and there's a bunch of things that I've been looking at and thinking about. And so I just decided to sign up and see what is going on here in the diocese and what's possible, so. Uh, awesome. Uh, I look forward to your thoughts on that then too. And Anita? I'm Anita Philbrick, and I'm from St. Thomas Beckett down in Cassville, probably about as far away from anybody as can be. Um, I am a lay catechist and also a lay preacher. And actually, I am very interested in formation. I'm always doing uh, those little packets that you send us every month. I do those faithfully and every everything in them and just really enjoy doing those i've always been involved with Christ with ch children though children and adolescents uh i have haven't done much adult although last night i had a sort of impromptu catechism class <laughs> in my house because there's a lady in our church that's wanting to be confirmed and she said oh anita we lost you Can anybody else hear Anita? No. Okay. Anita, what did you, you said you had a lay, you, you said you had an impromptu uh, catechism, catechism in your house. Yes. Yeah. Just she wanted to come over and find out. Um, she wants to be confirmed and she wants to know what was involved with it so we sat down i mean we'd already done a lot of the other stuff so we just sat down and talked about the, what would happen when she was confirmed and the promise she wanted to know the promises she would make because she wanted to be able to make them honestly so we spent a lot of time talking about that which was very touching anyway my husband signed up for the course and i am really here sitting in for him because he had to go to lodge meeting and, but I love formation, so I'm 
just happy to be here. Oh, I'm glad you're here too, but thank you. I'm glad you stepped in for him. And let's help Bill. Uh, I'm Bill Carl from uh, Church of the Resurrection in Blue Springs, and I'm the senior warden there. And with the uh, impending retirement in two months of Father David Lynch, I am trying to uh, learn everything I can. And uh, even though I've been around on the vestry off and on for 20 years, um, I appreciate these Zoom sessions. They're a convenient way for us to mm -hmm. get together and hear some things. So uh, happy to be here. They are. Thank you. And Father Jim. I'm Jim Lyle. I'm the rector at All Saints Church in Nevada. Up until recently, bivocational. Uh, I am three weeks retired from Missouri Southern State University, so um, I got that piece of my brain back. Um, I've been involved one way or the other with Christian formation for a long time. This is the time of the year when I always stop and reflect on the times I spent organizing and conducting Bible schools in the summertime and those kinds of things, and I was an adult Sunday school teacher for many moons, um, and I, uh, it's interesting in our, in our current situation in the world, um, Christian formation has become, I think, even more significant because this is really, this is really the, the, the vanguard for us in dealing with the world at all. It is the most adaptive, uh, the most flexible and agile of the different things that we do, and requires the most response to a changing world. And so it's something that I think is is of interest um, and should be. And plus any excuse to have a session with Kim Snodgrass is okay by me. <laughs> hey, I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. And Regina? I'm Regina Behrens. I'm with St. Mary Magdalene. I have, I'm the vestry warden and I've completed the coursework for lay preacher. I need to fill out some paperwork and I'm working on that last sermon, but I've always been into lifelong learning and now I've tried to declutter and now I've got a whole bunch of new books. Um, <laughs> when we did renewal works and we did get a good response on the survey, but our members kept saying, oh yes, we, we're interested in learning more about this, more about that, we'd like more education. But what I've found is, I mean, I did, somebody said they wanted to learn more about the Book of Common Prayer. I came up with a series that I put on our website. I think each of the installments got two views. We have a wonderful Lectio Divina before the service with Father Larry, which typically gets about three people. Um, I don't think we tried anything after the service. It's very hard to get people to stick either before or after. We had a really good, I thought, um, Lenten series via Zoom. So, okay, transportation is not a, an excuse. What was really good was a couple of fairly new mem members joined and were really active participants. But it just seems like no matter what we do, no matter how good the content, um, and you know, as I said, I've got the sources for content, so does Father Larry, but we haven't found a format that draws a lot of people. And yet I think they want it. So I'm hoping to get some advice here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now well, thank you. Right. Uh, I think a lot of people share that experience. And Sarah, how about you? Um, I am a member of the Adult Christian Formation Commission along with Father John Coyle at St. Andrews, and um, I, I'm i hoping, I kind of feel like we're in a rut. We have a dedicated, really dedicated group of individuals on that commission, but we need some new ideas, maybe some direction on how to approach what we're doing, and I'm just, I'm looking for advice and ideas from everybody, and was excited to see this as a, a resource to talk with other people in the same position as we are. And um, Bill, if you would tell Father David Lynch that Sarah Welch said, hello, I wish him the best in his <laughs> retirement. Um, he and I went to St. Michael's and All Angels for many years together. And um, I'm crazy about that guy. So uh, <laughs> tell him and his wife um, that I Maybe. send my best sure. to them. 
All I right. will do that. And and Gary, do you want to stick your head in and say hi? It might take him longer to find. Oh, there he is. It did. I was off doing something else. Um, I'm Gary Norman, the Darson Communications Director. I'm here listening and trying to get the new spirit update out. <laughs> and I can tell you that he's a wonderful resource and he'll most likely stop whatever he's doing to help. Um, <laughs> even if it puts him behind. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. well, again, welcome to everybody. Um, I've got, like I said, a very short, um, short presentation that I'm hoping will address most of what or some of the things that we're talking about. Um, I wanted to start by making sure I'm going to share my where is that on here? Gary? Oh, there we go. No. Share. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm used to too many different. Uh, There we go. There we go. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm sharing my screen and I wanted to start with uh, a short presentation about, about formation. Oops, and I already started it off. Okay, so uh, the question becomes, what is Christian formation? And I have found attending, whether it's a form of conference or visiting with people around the country, that that is a really hard thing to pin down because it's a really big thing. Um, so I wanted to talk about that, what that is, and specifically what I mean when I say it so that you'll know what I'm referring to and we can see if we're on the same page. So in my mind, Christian formation it's the process of being molded, shaped, transformed to follow the way of Jesus. It's, or another way of saying that, it's our spiritual formation as Christian involves awareness of the process of being conformed to the image, transformed to the image of Christ for the glory of God and for the sake of others, Second Corinthians. That is a pretty uh, simple statement, but it gets a little more convoluting. <laughs> so for me, by intentionally participating in activities that are formative, and by that, I mean worship, fellowship, education, and service, and I, evangelism's in there too. We bind everyday life experience, or everyday life to our experience of God. Formation to me is that glue that puts that together. It's, as you've mentioned, a lifelong process that requires participation. It requires intentionality. And it's important because it affects our very understanding of morality, economics, labor, creativity, family, the environment, uh, hospitality, justice, friendship, forgiveness. In short, formation is about everything. It's our daily life as individuals and as a community. It touches everyday life. So when I say that, I mean everything that you do as a community, too, has the potential to be a formative experience. So when you approach formation from that perspective, you're already doing it in so many ways. You just may not call it that. So the purpose of Diocesan Christian Formation Ministry is to encourage and nurture spiritual growth, Christian practices, and, the theolog and theological reflection. We do that by advocating for people to engage in an intentional, lifelong, life-giving, holistic experience with God. We want to encourage the liturgical, educational, service-oriented, and fellowship experience that move us outside the walls of church buildings in the form of mission and outreach and inclusiveness and evangelism. We want to promote healthy practices, relationships, self-discovery, and we want to provide a companion presence to walk alongside households and congregations 
through this process and do all that we can to support people. Oops, I went backwards, didn't I? Let's go this way. So bear with me <laughs> to fulfill that purpose and to advocate for intentional formation. We focus primarily on curating traditional and experiential resources. And that just simply simplifies the search process and it organizes organizes just a wealth of information. I'm going to show you some of those resources in just a minute, so I'll come back to that. Then we also focus on the Everything Holy Project, which um, Anita, you mentioned. It is a at-home, experiential, tangible, um, bringing church home type of experience. Again, we'll go back to that. We also are working on beginning to develop a diocesan formational arc. And for those in education, I think you'd understand that as scope and sequence that will provide, and this is really important to me, to provide congregations with a tool to help them create the environment for people of all ages to experience formational ministry through worship, education, fellowship, and service. And those things will expand biblical literacy, personal faith practices, Anglican history, uh, ethical decision-making, Christian belief, theology, those all can be aligned with milestones and curriculum and service. And I'll show you an example here in just a minute. Then also we have put, we put energy towards regular online hosts and just general communication to promote healthy spiritual practices, those relationships and then upcoming opportunities. Um, that is uh, more about that here in just a minute. So um, again, uh, I think I've talked about those. So this is an example of what I mean when I say a, a formational arc. This is a small example because the example we're gonna work on is gonna start at zero birth and end at death. It's gonna be a cradle to grave type of experience where we give ex where we have areas of focus, but those are also put along with opportunities for service, opportunities for education, opportunities for fellowship. And so it's gonna look something like this, but all, overall, paying attention to formation from this perspective allows you to look at it like a blueprint for what you're doing. This isn't just simply um, Sunday morning, frankly, um, to look at being formed as everything that you do in your community or frankly in your home as a potential formative experience kind of changes the whole direction of how you plan as a church. What kind of, what are you building and what are your goals? So to me, putting it together like this from that kind of a perspective would help almost every congregation because it's similar to a rule of life. You're creating a way to guide your decisions on what you offer and how you do it. And it all depends on your goals. Um, you have a design in mind as you're moving forward. It's not just a random spaghetti supper here and a something else there. You're doing this with intent and you're modeling that approach for the people that you're working with. Um, so that being said, Again, I'm going to, I'm, oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Darn. Okay. I'm going to share that again. Sorry. So now, there. All right. So now I wanted to show you a couple of those things we talked about. Uh, first of all, on the Dyson website, if any of you have gone there, you will, um, you will see that there's way more resources than anybody wants because resources are never the problem. There are, it's a plethora 
of resources out there. That That's not the problem. That's what's led me to feel like it's more how we move forward with those resources that matters. It's putting a plan in place, being very intentional. So um, again, there's things for individuals, for families. There's opportunities for summer. We list um, best practices. And then it's also broken down for children, for youth, for young adults for adults and for everyone. So for instance, if I go to this one, let me just show you what that looks like. It talks about why children's formational ministry is important. Then it also gives, like I said, way more information <laughs> than anybody wants. It gives you shareables, it gives you curriculum, uh, curriculum for purchase, but also curriculum that's free it puts together some downloadable resources, other ways that you can engage with children, things that are specific to stewardship, and then adult and educator resources for those working with children. Recommended Bibles and children's book and just good old great reads. For each one of those ministries, each one of those, it looks the same. There's all of this stuff. <laughs> so like I said, this is what makes me come to the conclusion that, for myself anyway, that it is, oops, that's not where I wanted to be, but let's go back, that it's having the plan and knowing where you want to go. It's not a matter of finding the perfect curriculum. There is no silver bullet. It just, it just doesn't work that way because formation is everything we do has the potential to be that. So, okay, I'm going to move from that and I'm going to show you really uh, a pretty short snapshot of the Everything Holy uh, webpage that's on our, that's again, um, you would go here, you would go well to christian formation oh our work you would go there you would go here it would take you to everything holy and again this is a monthly opt-in resource it's um it kind of just it does what it can to provide food for thought so each one has for instance a digital link there's other things that go with it, but you can go to the July packet uh, here in a minute. This is what a packet looks like. Oh, hey, look who wrote that one. <laughs> Father Larry, which was wonderful. So the, the each packet's about 16 pages long. Um, you can download it or you can sign up to have it be sent to you. We also have the Cat Mercer tells the story as a godly play story, whatever the focus of um, that month is, she tells it as a godly play story. So you have that, you have parent resources to use with the um, Everything Holy Packet. And then usually I just try to toss in just some other inspirational stuff that goes that can go with the packet. Then, I'm going to move on. And if I go to the New Spirit page and I go under Topics and I go to Christian Formation, I will see all the different ones that have been written that, again, just try to simply promote. I, yeah, I'm not sure about these, uh, if they're in a certain order or not but there's just a whole bunch of stuff on there <laughs> that promotes uh, spirituality in the home, uh, reflection, faith practices. And so that's, those are those three places that we are concentrating efforts. There's a couple of other things that we're doing, but those are the main areas of uh, of work. Okay, so that 
that took me 20 minutes. Sorry about that. So I wanted to give you a really broad look at what we're trying to do. And now um, it's kind of important to me to hear how I can help and any any needs that we can address. Um, if you'd like to know more about some of that information to ask questions, I, I'm open. I'm open. So whoever. Well, first of all, um, first of all, Kim, thank you for doing all that curation of a lot of information. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I wasn't aware is that uh, rich. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's it's a little overkill. Yeah. I think but, Gary would but agree. I, but there's a lot of good stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I would simply like to share, uh, and I know there's a couple congregations uh, that are represented in this that have done this, is um, main well, from adolescents through adults, renewal works is is a way of getting a sense of the spiritual vitality of a congregation from which you can start to create a plan for adult formation in terms of its its um, what needs are and um i know i know saint andrews has done it i know ann kyle is doing it mary mag did it a couple other places did it it's scalable you don't have to be a huge congregation and it works for a smaller congregation but um what it does is it, it does something we don't do very often in the Episcopal Church, which is not talk about, you know, liturgy and what do you like about the sermons and all that, but really about people's spirituality. Nice. And yeah. the trend in, and so that's part of, it's owned by Forward Movement now. Uh, it has a flat fee of $500, um, very much worth it. You get personal consultation, but what came up for us at, at Mary Magdalene was the need to integrate scripture into life more and the need, because we have a lot of service things going on, but the need to integrate a sense of spirituality in doing service. Um, and so we've created off of our vestry uh, um, a little spiritual vitality group that, that works on what are we gonna offer in, in the congregation that tries to meet those two needs that renewal works did. So that's that's just a, an idea about where do you start? Uh, St. Andrews already has it. I know John Spicer has used it, but that might be something that you'd like to explore a little bit, um, uh, Sarah and John. And uh, Larry, to tag on to that, I'm gonna share my screen again. Mm -hmm. There's uh, also another resource out there and that is called a spiritual pyramid. Um, it's a little bit uh, smaller in scale, and it's something that also a, uh, anywhere from an individual to a, um, mm. a, to a congregation can use. And it, it, it's, it's a, a simplified version. It's not going to, it's gonna be a lot more reflective. It's gonna have to take a lot of facilitation within a vestry to work through it, but doing so would help an individual or um, or a congregation uh, figure out how they spend their time. What is it we do and for what purpose do we do that? So that's another resource that is on the website and free. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a, a simple one. Um, but it's just another one, and it's right in the same vein, though not as um, not as professionally done as as uh, renewal works. And you're going to have a different you're going to have a different result. Just lots of conversation. But I agree with you wholeheartedly that that is the direction that will let you know where you want to go. Um, even if, like Regina says, you don't necessarily get everybody to come at least you're doing what you're doing with intent by by figuring that out so okay sorry Blah, talk too much i'm i'm a i'm a new member of the commission at st andrews and um we've just you know we're we're struggling with 
the issue probably more than anything else, aside from the fact that we don't have a clear sense of direction that we're we're able to articulate. We're we've got some sense, but we haven't been able to articulate it. We've been playing with some issues, and and Father John and I have been talking ex extensively about this. Uh, but we talked, Sarah and the rest of the commission talked quite a bit about some of these kinds of issues in the last couple of meetings that we've had. Um, but what I think is is elegant is it you you're from cradle to grave the whole issue of formation cradle to grave yes. is what i've been uh wanting to come up with and father john and i've been talking about that in a way especially using re, uh, renewal works model but wanting to flesh it out and cover some uh you know the in one of the sessions we talked a little bit or i introduced them to the the piaget colberg fowler's mm -hmm. stages of cognitive moral and spiritual development mm -hmm. and and helping us to think in terms about what's going on just in terms developmentally with people and where they are yes. and how to put together a program that takes that all seriously and so in some sense we're working right now as a commission i think to become kind of clear what we're about as a commission but the beauty mm -hmm of what you've just showed us is it can really speed up our process, I think. Well, here, let me show you something else really quickly. I got it right here. Here it is. OK, so this isn't like, hey, uh, somebody shared this at a forma conference several years ago. And hold on a second. It took, I think it's a church in, uh, um, anyway, where the forma conference was. Or close to five clergy people and lay people gathered together for over a year to come up with something that looks like this. They called it the Pilgrim's Way Progress. And I like it, but it stops at 18. Mm -hmm. And our life doesn't stop at 18. Um, but I liked. I liked the organization of it. I liked the fact that they were, they had uh, biblical literacy, personal faith practices. Those things were their, were cornerstones of what they wanted to be able to provide. So this is from, where were we? Augusta, Georgia. Um, you notice they have the catechists in there. You notice they have choir in there. They had the opportunities to lay read. So it it honestly uh, took a look at the big picture, and that's why I was uh, I was kind of thrilled to see this because I thought that's what, frankly, I think the Episcopal Church needs is a little not that you have to do that. You have to choose that curriculum but some kind of overall guidance so that you know what your milestones are. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise, uh, you don't. Um, what do you want someone to experience of God when they're in the nursery? Well, they do experience God in the nursery. What is that? Is it love? Maybe it's that simple. What do you want someone at 65 or at 15 to have knowledge of? Do, do you want them to be able to say the Lord's Prayer? Well, make that a milestone and then celebrate it. When people can accomplish those things. Um, yes, okay. So well, the, map that's is, I, the, map, the map is helpful. If you have a map, uh, exactly. Father John likes the use of the pilgrimage. I think he may be familiar with this passage, but likes the image of the pilgrimage way. Yeah. Um, I have a different set of language, uh, but my involvement in adult Christian formation, in the sense of formally involved in the in the education piece of it per se, thirty five years ago, I was doing this stuff. So for me, it's I'm so out of date in terms of knowing what's out there and what's available. This is why I'm interested in what we're doing here. But there's a, literally, I mean. If you think of it, then I'm going to look at, again, the spaghetti supper as more than a spaghetti supper, right. but an opportunity for fellowship, which forms me because I'm in conversation 
I'm in fellowship with others. Um, how, what does it say over and over again in scripture? The disciples gathered together to do break bread in each other's homes and, and um, I'm sorry, what is, what is the other thing? Uh, you know, break bread and share the, oh, come on, that's all over the place. But my brain's not thinking right now. <laughs> anyway, yes. I, so every single thing from that perspective, when you're in service with something, with someone doing um, any kind of service opportunity, that is formative. Why do we not put children of all ages, expose them to that? Because I think that's what people are looking for. It's not that I don't believe in God. I want church to be relevant. And making it relevant is doing, is uh, listening to the message. And the message is get out there, do some stuff. So I think, I think young people notice when it's not there. Um, they also notice when they, when they don't have the opportunity to be considered full members of a congregation that five-year-old is a member of the congregation just like the 65 year old and deserves the the time and the energy that goes into making sure that their needs are met also so in my mind intergenerational ministry it has some really great opportunities especially for congregations of on a smaller size but also for those large ones um, but again, when I approach that, when I approach that service that this is formational, to me it puts, um, and I've been, I've been working with this for so long, this is just, just makes sense to me, but I'm not maybe doing the best job explaining it. But everything is based on a formative experience. I, I move forward with my plans to do anything and ask myself, how is what we're doing moving towards our goal moving towards what what our plan is our purpose how does being an acolyte how i mean do we explain that or do we just say hey <laughs> i'm sure glad you sh showed up today to serve at the altar but do we do we prep that with this is a formative experience do we yeah do we prep um, service activities are all of those things are it's like the foundation to everything is that perspective that bird's eye view that 10,000 feet uh, up big picture looking at everything we do from that uh, oh Larry oh yeah okay I don't know if everybody saw that, but he suggests everyone take a look at the newest forward movement uh, 2022 catalog for resources. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you sort of. Uh, you've caused me to start rethinking the word intentionality, and the more I do, the more I'm seeing a real keystone to this whole thing, mm -hmm. because if I'm intentional in what I'm doing, I'm saving myself a lot of time articulating what I'm doing to the person for whom I'm doing it. Oh, yes. You mentioned, you mentioned the yes. spaghetti supper. I attended a church once where we met for dinner together once a month. And not one single time did anyone go, hey, we're having fellowship. Isn't this great? It was yes. just the, intention, the intentionality yes. of being together. And that seems especially cogent when we're talking intergenerational. Yeah, I can I can talk all day about right. theological truth and liturgical history. and But if I'm including you in what's being done. You know, if we're if we're engaging each other as fellow members of the body of Christ rather than any other kind of relationship, then that intentionality saves a lot of time, I think, and 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 cuts right to the heart of what it is we're trying to do. Well, I think people want to know what are you about? What are you? And and oftentimes my experience has been you just get in a congregation and you're staying there until you figure it out by osmosis. It comes to you. Oh, I see. I see. But connecting that dot, it's really, really important. Can you imagine how different a child's life could be is if I 
if I am working with adults that I know care about me alongside on a service project, all of a sudden, I'm not alone in the world. People have my back. That's important. That's important. I feel and, like you're... I feel like your opening words are so key, and that is, what is our purpose? And to be able to articulate clearly what our purpose is. Once we can articulate our purpose and then look at the this, this nature of the community that we're in, yes. we can think about how do we, you know, for me, it's how, what, what then is our mission for the next period of time in order to achieve that purpose? It's this exactly. year's. It's this year's, and then we can start establishing the, the goals and things that we need to. But if we can't articulate the purpose of adult Christian or a Christian formation, then I think we're just kind of shotgunning programs. To mm -hmm. me, and can you imagine how it would be transformative to me to see a, a vestry do that at the beginning of every year? Right. So, okay, we're going to have a small retreat. Maybe it's a two hour retreat, but we're going to look at, we're going to compare our calendar to our goals. Well, I know are, St. Andrews, they do that every year, but what doesn't happen, and, and Father John and I were talking about it this week, what doesn't happen is kind of how does that happen in each one of the commissions? And yes. So the desire is to get that for our formation group so that they can be we can be clear about that in the commission and yeah. then fill in the blanks and all the details and pieces that need to be filled in for a period of time so but it could be a five-year thing oh I, you know it could oh, be oh, easily oh, a five-year yeah. thing and Absolutely. then you have a map and then at each year when you're or each time you come to a meeting you're not trying to reinvent whatever it is you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You can adjust, but right. But and and really it's not rocket science. We're supposed we're su we're supposed to be uh doing what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Regina, you were gonna say something, I think. Yeah, Father Larry, the question he was asking quite often in the vestry is what makes us different from the Rotary Club? And I think that's it. I mean, the Rotary Club does good stuff. Yeah. But we need to think of what we're doing as Christians and what it means to us as Christians. Yes. Because we're intentionally doing it to follow, to learn, mm -hmm. to be disciples. Yeah. Live out the way of Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something I think we for really kind of crazy reasons, uh, shy away from looking at really specifically. Um, I think one of the challenges uh, the commission at St. Andrews struggles with is finding people who want to actually do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, just finding people to do something, to do it, to lead it. And I feel like uh, one member of the commission said that if she were able, uh, she, she's able to, to facilitate a group, she has the skills to do that sort of thing, but she needs a curriculum, something that will help. Well, you know, you've just shown us, I mean, I went out and did some research to find some curriculums but this just, you just showed us a lot of resources along that line that would empower people to do it. And, you know, I, I didn't know that this was available. So I'm, that's why I'm here. Well, glad, good. I'm, I'm glad you do now. Glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you do now. I don't know. Does that look helpful to you, Sarah? All of the curriculum and stuff? Yes. And, and I, I would echo what you say. Um, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy facilitating classes, but I'm not very creative. I, I can't come up with the ideas, but if you hand me the ideas, I'll be happy to implement them. And I think there are other people, we have a, a, a plethora of talent at St. Andrews, I think, but oh. I, I don't, I, I'm just not, 
I, I think a lot of people feel like me that they want, you know, yeah, I can implement that curriculum. I, I can't come up with it, but I can implement it. And I wrote all these down and took pictures of them on the screen. So I'm ready to start surfing tomorrow on the internet to look at all well, this. And, and I, I'm going to stick, I got another soapbox to stand on. And that's that if you really, I mean, if you're really looking in terms of simply education as that component to this, um, if you really break down an entire year, whether it's youth ministry or or whatever you're doing, it's only a certain number of weeks. It's not that bad. And all you have to do is have a game plan and sit down and I can guarantee you in one morning, you're going to have your whole year lined out so that you don't walk into a room unprepared or feeling that you don't have it. And if you really break down the amount of time that people actually spend on a Sunday morning in an actual classroomy kind of experience, I think you're doing good to get 30 minutes. That's so true. now I've really narrowed down that. <laughs> I've really narrowed that down. And you know, adults are gonna talk a long time about something, but kids that, that takes a little bit more planning and, and crafts and all sorts of other stuff involved. But it's the organization of it, as far as the educational component, is really that much, it's not as complicated as it looks because you just come up with your basic lesson plan and say, we're gonna spend 10 minutes just getting in the door and saying hi and checking in because that's important. It's important to say hi to people. It's important to say, how was your week to make that connection? I know what you did. I know who you are. That I think means something. I mean, it does to me. If somebody says something like that, I go, oh, wow. I think <laughs> the breakdown of community in our culture uh, really points to the fact that churches are one of the places that you can start to build a safe, accepting community. Um, I think, yeah, absolutely. And that can look one way in a smaller congregation in a different way in a larger congregation. I, I'm, I'm finishing um, with a, a whole team of people in a project that was funded by Lilly Foundation of how in Episcopal churches can we help people uh, live into their baptism. And one of our findings has been something that's been around for a long time, but a lot of Episcopal churches haven't really tagged into it, and that is small groups. And there's all sorts of resources for small groups. Uh, church Next is a video-based thing. Oh, that um, would be a great one. Yeah. And, and again, Forward Movement has all sorts of stuff on, on you know, just Episcopal 101, or they have the path on scripture themes. But I'm really... Um, at least from the work that we've done with 23 parishes, um, we maybe we're late to the game, but uh, small groups really make a difference. And my wife Christy is a great example. She really looked at being a Christian as a as an adult, and uh, the thing that changed her. And she was living in San Francisco, a place where there's a lot of people, but sometimes not a lot of community. And it was dinner groups that mm -hmm. really were key for her to grow in terms of her sponsoring parish and eventually to go to seminary. And I, I think that that looks differently in, in small parishes, yeah. but it's really important because it's, and then when you come together for Eucharist, you're bringing all these small circles of Christian community together around the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. That was it. The fellowships gathered, they, the disciples gathered for fellowship and the breaking of the bread. So it's, it, yes, it's, but I do think something that I wish we could organize and do um, is, or make available in some way, maybe through Church Next, which by the way is on the website too, um, as a link, <laughs> if, um, is helping people learn how to facilitate. Because a lot of people think, oh, I can't do that. Um, 
but anybody can do that. But some people are natural facilitators, mm -hmm. I think, and other people can learn how to do it, but they need the confidence to know they don't have to know the answers mm -hmm. to the questions going in. The they Lifelong uh, Learning Center at VTS uh, has some hybrid uh, models for people to learn how to facilitate small groups. Could you repeat that, Father Larry? What, what sure. was that? So you can just put in an internet um, a search engine and just put in lifelong learning at Virginia Theological Seminary, and it'll take you there. And, and they are constantly doing uh, kind of pe uh, pastoral skills 101. And, and one of them is how to small groups in a church. Um, and it, and it's, it's based on some input that comes over, uh, you know, is internet based, but then some things that you actually do with a small group of learners. Um, and I, I and there's a lot of books on it because other Christian denominations have really been doing small groups for a long time, and we can certainly borrow from them. Methodist. That that, that the Methodist. 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 Yeah. Um, well, living that, compass. That's a resource for you. Uh, living compass has some wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, four six week conversations that you can do. Anybody can lead that, it's conversation. It's just mm -hmm. sitting and talking in a group and it's in a book and it's free. And it's already there for you. All you have to do is say, would you give me four to six weeks of your time? Would you commit for four to six weeks to do that? Would you stay with the group? Um, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, a, a long term goal would be to not just have those resources so overwhelming on the website, but a long term goal would be to be able to create a scaled down version of building faith. And I don't know if you all are already familiar with that, but that is that and VTS are two of the resources that um, we definitely would recommend as a commission. They're just a wealth of stuff on there. But if I could go to the Building Faith website and type in mm -hmm. Lent, I'm gonna get a, a plethora of information. It's just gonna roll, roll and roll and roll. And it's more than I can use, but I pick something and I go with it. I can type in intergenerational. I, I mean, there's just, I can type in mission, um, it, it, just that whatever that keyword is, it's like a Google search specifically for formational activity. Mm -hmm. And like uh, Father Larry was saying, really what's there at VTS is a wealth of information for on the, uh, to me, on the planning side of things, um, just so much so much good stuff that those two were the ones I think most people on the commission said those were their go-tos mm -hmm. to, to look for information. Um, but there's other stuff. Yeah, there's other, there's all sorts of stuff out there. Um, so that's an awful lot. Um, is, and is, I know, this, is this recorded? Is the 20 minutes of your presentation recorded so that it's available? Uh, Probably with Gary. He's working. The whole way to be recorded. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it is. I think things are yeah being recorded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, more than anything, what would to me if people can shift their perspective of formation to include what they already are doing and just push it under formation they that it expands your view of what of what you do and who you already are um visiting congregations i felt like the bishop has mentioned uh, people are doing wonderful things wonderful things out there but so often 
we bang ourselves on the head and say we're not doing anything because we don't have a Sunday school. But I bet you're doing outreach for the community. I bet you're I, I bet you are doing uh, something in terms of fellowship on a semi regular basis. Those things are formative. And then we can quit being angry at ourselves and start looking out at uh, a bigger picture uh, looking at formation as a bigger picture and just Sunday school education is one component of a really big thing. That would be my wish. Look at <laughs> anyway, well, how uh, is there any I know we're really close on our time here and I want to respect that so um, I'd at least like to offer if anybody has any additional questions. Um, uh, you need help with resources, there is absolutely no reason to reinvent the wheel. It's probably out there in some form and I can help you um, adapt it to your congregation. Um, there's curriculum that's out there that may not be exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. And I can help you work with that to make it more in line with what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve, or do it in the timeline that you're able to do it in. Um, Godly Play, for instance, is a fabulous resource. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Wish everybody could do that. But you may not have the resources to purchase all of the Godly Play stuff, but you can still do Godly Play. Mm -hmm. Just a, a different kind of way to do it. So in your, in your uh, material through the Diocesan website, do you also have things about um, uh, sacramental preparation, infant <laughs> baptism, adult baptism, confirmation? Uh, are there resources there? Uh, the reason I'm thinking about it in a, in a deanery clergy meeting, uh, someone shared that, you know, the bishop was coming and they had three adults who were going to be confirmed. And I didn't say anything, but I had to really be honest inside myself. And I said, I wonder what formation has occurred, you know, to help people enter into confirmation. So I was just wondering well, if you have anything curated we, under formation we, that would address that. I do. Number one, I have just uh, something that came from uh, Sharon, Eli, you know who I mean big name formation. Anyway, she had collected all of the different, all of them for um, specifically related to confirmation resources. But I know I worked with Father David Lynch a mm -hmm. few years ago, and we put together what we think would be at least anywhere between a six weeks and a nine months uh, course of study depending on who it was some and a lot of like you said a lot of people the bishop is coming <laughs> so <laughs> that's the way i remember growing up uh, the bishop was coming we need to get people ready but we're talking about confirmation this is a kind of, this kind of a baptism big with parents i mean yes it's the same issue well, the the actually the National Church website, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's not National Church, it's the Episcopal Church website has a wonderful, I think, resource for and videos for baptism preparation with parents. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. I really like that. And it's not just parents, it's anybody. So I would check that one out. Um, but when it comes to curriculum, there are there are some people that want a quick turnaround like six weeks and some people that would really like to move that farther that farther down the road and turn that more into a nine month approach to confirmation so you're making a different kind of informed choice and i so that's what we did was kind of line up what the curriculum is that matches the goals what are your goals were for developing personal prayer. Um, what is your 
Who is God? When do we talk about that? That's kind of that's kind of important, but we don't, you know, sit back and go, who is Jesus to me? And those to me are elemental questions that should be posed before I I mean not I think Anglican history is wonderful as a as a teaching tool, but especially when you think about what people went through to write the Book of Common Prayer. That alone is pretty exciting. Um, but where where is that? Where is that in what we do? And so that's what he helped me outline. So I've got it. I've got something there. But it, um, it was kind of in our transition period. And I just didn't go any farther, but I'd love it to, because I think it was a good outline. Um, he and I agreed anyway, it was a good outline for what somebody can do. So again, you have a guide. You're not just out there, what shall I do? Because once again, unless you purchase a curriculum or find it, you're kind of out there going, what do I think somebody needs to know? But so much of that takes a conversation. Let's talk about God. How do you see God in your life? You know, somebody that looks at the highs and lows of their lives and identifies where God's been in that. Um, it, it, there's just, yes, yes. So the answer is, yes, it's out that's there. That's human it is about. That's what you're exactly, about. exactly. And that's, that's a whole, a whole other conversation. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation that should be something we're able to do and and um, promote to me. And so it's finding the resources and the means to do that. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Gary. You put on that VTS one on the in the chat box. Thank you. And the building faith is buildingfaith.org, I believe. So um Anyway, I get kind of excited about this subject. Sorry, because <laughs> I think it affects everything in your life. Um, yeah, so, uh, and from that perspective, um, I once had a clergy person tell me, much to my dismay at the time, said, everything is a spiritual matter, everything. And I thought, okay and it, it just stuck it stuck with me so what you guys say is important what you people say sorry men and women clergy people say is really sticks sometimes 40 years later <laughs> um anyway what i where i was going is if you guys have any questions now i'm going over time you have any questions um want to follow up a conversation uh, please give me a call, uh, text me, email me, and my, my information's out there. So yeah, just let me know. And um, especially as you head into fall, um, you know, and you're specifically thinking towards education, uh, check out some of those resources. Maybe they're just offer something new. Consider doing a rotational thing as opposed to, as opposed to just uh, following a set curriculum. So anyway, okay, all right, zip it. And <laughs> uh, anyway, I, it was really good to have you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and again, I'm really, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, where you're doing it. Thank and you. thank you so much. This has been incredibly helpful. I've been taking okay. notes, and taking pictures of the screen. Oh, okay. I've got a million things to look at tomorrow. Okay. And probably, so thank you so so much. Okay. Well, we'll. Let's, Get together sometime and talk formation. That yeah, that's a fun thing to do. Thanks for coming, Sarah. Okay. Hey, thank you guys.